Last time we were together, we saw how to end the game and win the game using broadcast blocks. This time we will add a little more complexity by adding a variable that will allow us to keep score whenever the cat gets the cheesy puffs. So what that means is that we're going to have to say goodbye to our win game, at least for right now. So any of the scripts that have win game, we're going to go ahead and remove those. So when I receive win game, goodbye. Oops, I need to get that off of there. Same thing here. When I receive win game, just it's not something that we'll have right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that for now. Now you can always bring that back later and have the game won after you receive so many points. Uh, but I hearken back to the 80s games where you just kept going until you lost. And then you had a high score. So that's what we're going to do is get a score this time. So when the cat touches the cheesy puffs, instead of it winning the game, it's actually just going to get a point. And that's where we're going. So we'll get rid of that. We're going to go ahead and go into data. We're going to click make a variable. We're going to title this points. And that's going to apply to all sprites. And so what this requires is to set a few parameters. Number one, we want it to be at zero when the game starts. So we'll throw it up here under the green flag. And then all we need to do is that every time it touches the cheesy puffs, we want to increase them by one. Very simple and straightforward. And if you double click that, you can just have a simple looking score counter up there. All right. So now if I click the green flag. I know that the cheesy puffs are going to go up here first, which we can deal with in a second. Boom. Oh no, what's going on there? I got to rack up as many points as I wanted as I stood there. And what was the reason for that? Well, the reason for that is that I have it changing the points, but then there's no wait time. And there's nothing else going on to make it more of a challenge to get points. So there's a couple different ways we can tweak this. Number one, we could add in wait time. That way, when you go up and you touch the cheesy puffs, it waits. So that's one solution. But the other solution involves using both the wait time and a little help from a go-to. So when the game starts, the cat goes to the center. We can have the same thing happen when it scores a point. We'll just duplicate that and throw that there. So let's see how that works now. So we'll stop it and start the game. And let's see what happens. There we go. Send me back. There we go. So we could also test this out and maybe we don't need the wait time. Maybe you can go right back right away and we'll be, we won't get any extra points out of that. And that appears to be the case. So that adds to the challenge a little bit because then it bounces us back. And that's important. So let me get rid of this wait time. We'll just test this one last time to see how this works. Yep, we can only get one point at a time. So, awesome. It's exactly what we want. Now we have a score going. So what else can we do to this project to customize it? You can always add a backdrop to it to make it look good. But there was one thing on my mind that I thought might be really helpful. We already know where the cheesy puffs are going to go. And that gets to be a bit of a problem because you could guess and you could camp on the spots, which makes it a challenge as well. So when we go to the cheesy puffs, we can do a few things that could make this work. Now, if we're really satisfied with where it goes, we need to kind of keep in mind that that's going to make it a little more difficult to get to the places we want it to be. If we want it to stay around the edge, then we have to think about our lines. So for instance, on this first step, it goes up here. So if we want it to stay around the same line, we leave this number the same, and then we just change the x number. And something we can do is actually use an operator called random, and we can have it pick a random number 
and we can have it go all the way across the edge from 240 to 240. And then it could randomly appear anywhere along this line. And we could have it do the same alternating throughout. Because this one goes up and down. So it goes left and right. This one goes up and down. So now as it goes through, it appears in random places. And if for some reason we uh, mess something up there, then we just need to go back through that. So once again, if it's starting here, it's going to be random across this line. And then the next step will be random across that line. And the next step will be random across very shallow lines. So that's probably not initially what I intended to do there with that one. So I might move that back into here and then into here and then try and get it to be roughly along the same lines that we want it to be. So if we're going negative x, we probably want like negative 220x. And then this one would have been our negative y, negative 150. So now we should be all set to go there with the random pop-up. So instead of it popping up right here, it's actually slightly off the mark. And in the next place, it be right there. Oh, and then over there. And then down there. So adds a little bit more intrigue to it when you start to throw in the random numbers like that. And there's a bunch of other ways that you can go about customizing that as you get more advanced, but right now you have yourself a playable game. Now you could mess with the aesthetics, make it look better and play around with that, but you have just created your very own scratch game. Congratulations.